guess first of all, I'll talk about what you guys have been working on so far offensively and with the quarterbacks too. Yeah, uh, day, day four today, uh, just second day in pads, base install really. The first five days is heavy base install, and then we'll take a day off before the first scrimmage. Uh, we've thrown a lot at the guys, maybe, I don't know, maybe more than we ever have in the first four days. We're really trying to get it all in now so we can have some time to evaluate guys, especially the young guys, how they pick everything up. Um, you know, from a quarterback standpoint, um, some good and some bad. All three of those guys, you know, it's hard when you're cycling them all three trying to do it equally um, in terms of just, you know, anybody getting a lot of con continual reps to get a great evaluation. The scrimmage will really help us with that. But um, all three have done a nice job making plays, but all three have missed some plays. So uh, as a whole, just looking for the consistency of performance we need to take advantage and make explosive plays. Fred, not, not to believe a point, but obviously we haven't talked to you about it since you lose your best skill position player in the second straight year. So what's your, been your, your reaction for the past week? I don't know if we've lost our best skill player. So that would be my answer. But your reaction to losing Javon in general? I won't talk about the guys that are here. So that's a fair question, but I'm going to talk about the guys that are here and we'll go from there. I feel really good about how the running backs are practicing right now. I really do. Yeah, Carrion's a guy that you know, gained weight, got bigger and more physical. What have you seen out of him these, these first couple of days? Carrion's steady. I mean, he's very instinctive. Um, you know, so far he seems to be pretty healthy. Shoulders holding up well. Um, again, he's still young, and he's had one season here, and and has never had a game where he had a ton of carries. But he's smart. He's a real smart kid, so he understands the skit scheme. He understands the protection. He's got good instincts. So just need to continue to get him reps and get him ready. And so far, he's had a good first four days. We haven't even put on full pads yet. That'll be tomorrow for the first time. So there's still a lot, you know, left to be understood about everybody. What's the timeline like in, in the next week for the quarterbacks? Is it very similar to what you guys did in 13 where you're just looking for that light to come on for one of them? And kind of yeah, realize? I mean, uh, absolutely. As quick as possible is the best case scenario for us. Um, I think it's best for that individual and really all of them. I think it's best for our team. Um, but it, it's also getting it right is more important than getting it done fast. And so, like I said, tomorrow will be the third day with pretty much shoulder pads on at least, first day in full pads get a day off, and then we'll have a really good scrimmage. And um, whether or not we know after that, I don't know, but we'll probably have a pretty decent idea. And then we'll just kind of evaluate what we're right after that scrimmage. I know you're, you know, like you said, you haven't really done a lot, but how is JF3 right now with turnovers? I know that was a big concern. Uh, he has not had as many turnovers, uh, you know, but then again, last year, I don't know how many he really had in a practice setting. It was when we went live and went in the scrimmage setting. So, again, that's why the scrimmage is probably the best – test also because guys aren't just in there for four plays and out and four plays and out. They're getting drives. And so there's results after everything. It's a result-driven game. So are we scoring points? Are we getting first downs? Are we moving it on third down? Turn it over. So, um, but it, he's done a better job protecting the football so far, yes. When you guys go screen, when you screen, screen. Um, We got a practice tomorrow. We got an off day, and I believe we'll probably around Tuesday or sometime early next week. You say that getting it right is what's most important, and that's always always the case. Obviously. Right. But bear with me here. But can you, do you feel you can afford to be wrong? And by that I mean, Red, from the standpoint of this fan base and what they saw last year from Jeremy and Sean, if it weren't to be John initially and something were to not, the performance isn't there, and you turn to, to John at that point and he succeeds, I think the fan base at that point would say, well, how come he wouldn't wasn't there in the first place? Because you kind of knew what you had before as opposed to they're really looking forward to a dual threat capability. So right. could you afford to be wrong as opposed to there were probably times where you could be in your, in your career? Well, no, I don't think you really ever want to be wrong with, you know, picking the starting quarterback for your football team. Um, but I also think, while I understand the question, that first of all, we want whoever it is to start and be the guy and everything to be right, regardless of who that is. But we're not going to put a guy out there if he's not ready if you can't protect the football, if you can't give us the best chance to win. And, you know, sometimes that guy is not ready at the beginning of the year. And um, sometimes they are ready by week six. I mean, you see that with a lot of people, a lot of times whether it's a true freshman or redshirt freshman. In this case with John, he's almost like a true freshman. I mean, yeah, he's coming from junior college, but he didn't play either of his two years at Florida State, and he split time last year. So he didn't have a lot of college snaps under his belt. Um, so... That's a good question. Uh, we're going to put out the guy that we think uh, gives us the best chance to win uh, from the jump, 
and um, we'll go from there and see how things go. What right. kind of kid is John Franklin III? I mean, everybody's been talking about him on the on the documentary. There's mixed opinions, of course, but what, you've yeah. seen him since the spring. Uh, he's a great kid. You know, I haven't watched the documentary, by the way. Um, You're so in it. That's what I heard. Uh, I've gotten some texts. So, uh, what is IMBD or whatever? They're not movie data. Yeah, someone asked me if I had my profile up or something yet today. I don't even know what they're talking about. But, um, so, uh, but anyways, I have no idea how that portrayed him or anyone. Um, but he's a good young man. He's a good kid. Uh, he's been a hard worker. He's been a great teammate. I just hope everybody is fair to him with expectations because, you know, we put so much up on hype and expectations just because we have so much time and we need something to talk about. And if you are the guy, great. Still, don't put the expectations on someone. If you're not, right away, that doesn't also mean you failed. I mean, again, you're talking about a young man who didn't start playing quarterback until sophomore year in high school. Most guys that play quarterback in the SEC were playing quarterback in fifth, sixth grade and then has not played hardly any college ball except for splitting time at junior college. So he's improving, but there's still, you know, a lot of just some guys just need to play the game. And so how it shakes out, I don't know. But regardless, either way, I just hope that the expectations are fair to him. How do you like Austin Golson doing the tackle? I understand that, you know, he did what he had to do last year, but he really likes not having to have the ball in his hands. Yeah, so. you know, and he's done a solid job for us. He's, uh, he's a very athletic kid. He's more athletic probably than you think by just looking at him. Uh, he played tackle, obviously, all his career in high school. He played it the one year he was at Ole Miss. So he's comfortable out there. He's doing a nice job. He's been steady for us. Sometimes you just take that extra responsibility off of him, and, um, you know, it's just better for him. But uh, he's had a steady four days. Um, the thing about all our guys is the competition is, is strong. I mean, we're competing at every spot. And, um, you know, we're going to play the best guys. I don't care if it's a freshman or a fifth-year senior. We've got to have the guys that can execute, can make plays, can be mentally and physically tough. I mean, that's the number one thing because our league's a tough league. And every game, even last year, five games came down in the fourth quarter for us that we didn't win. Uh, who's going to make those plays in the third quarter and the fourth quarter? Who's going to be tough? All the guys are competing, and Austin's doing a nice job of that. He's just got to keep on coming. What have your initial impressions been of Cam Martin? He's really fast. Um, he's a really good kid, uh, really conscientious. Uh, he wants to be good. He wants to be able to help us this year. He's studying hard. It's been four days, so he's his head's spinning. But uh, he, he, can, he can run, so we'll see. You know, it'll be good, especially the guys that have never been here. You know, when we go live and scrimmage, that's when we'll get the best information on those guys. And, you know, can they hold on to the ball? Can they break a tackle? How are they when they get just absolutely their head knocked off? Do they hop back up? And, uh, but so far, you know, he's had a solid first four days for a newcomer. Is it fair yeah. to suggest that Cam Petway, is that, you know, the expectations for him are different this year? And, and what have you seen for him at a tailback that, that you like? Yeah, we're going, I mean, we're going to need Cam to, to be a big part of our success. And uh, the good thing, he's played tailback before. He's now played H-back, so there's a lot of versatility there. Uh, he's a load. You know, and he gets going, and he goes downhill. He runs like a running back supposed to, and he's a load. So, um, you know, we're really counting on him to, to step up and have a big year. And so far, he's he's doing everything you'd like him to do to be going in that direction. Red, Red if, um, if John Franklin doesn't win the starting job, by the way, do you think there's a possibility you could work him into some certain packages and still use him early on in the season? Absolutely. You know, nothing's off the table. Again, you know, for us, the big emphasis for us is, is we've got to play with better tempo. And, and part of that is playing with better tempo, okay, but the other part is obviously converting and staying on the field and getting some momentum going. We've got to play with good tempo. Um, and, and then the next thing is we've got to generate explosive plays. That's where we really struggled last year, and it's hard – uh, to score a lot of points in this league if you can't generate explosive plays. So we'll do anything and everything we can to put our guys in positions to allow them to try to make plays. And uh, so if that's, that's something that we need to do, that's something we need to do. Brett, how much did y'all recruit Cam Martin before he? Uh, you know, I had talked to Cam a lot on the phone um, that uh, I, my time's off. So I don't, at some point for six months to a year, and he kept saying, yeah, I want to come visit, I want to come visit. You know, sometimes a kid in Texas, you're a little skeptical until they, they actually show up. And then, of course, he committed to Baylor, and so therefore we never got him on campus. So we had good dialogue with him for a while. Uh, he was a kid we were familiar with, but we didn't have a great relationship because we had never come and visited. Um, but, you know, it kind of goes back to the thing in recruiting that um, you always try to leave good impressions with people and treat people the right way because you never know when things are going to circle back. And, uh, we're blessed to have him. Did he contact y'all first after he got his release? After he got his release, yes. 
Yeah, we, he reached out to us, he and his coach. Well, with, 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 Cam, uh, uh, with Cameron, that went out pretty much completely at, uh, at, uh, sorry, at tailback. Right. Have you told Chandler, well, I mean, it's your job at H-back now, so I don't, I mean, who else is kind of rotating there with him? Well, Chandler knows that, but yeah, I'll say this now. I mean, Chandler rushed for a bunch of yards in the highest league in Florida football and won state championships. And so Chandler's a guy that can carry the football. Y'all saw it in the spring game now. He did get hawked down, but, uh, you know, he can run the football. So he's a guy that's going to play both positions. Uh, then you look at guys like Landon Rice, Jalen Harris, uh, guys that are tight ends but can also play H-back, like we've had guys do in the past. And uh, so that's something we're, we're working them at. And then you've got uh, – uh, Keenan Sweeney's doing a good, nice job for us. So uh, we've got options there. And that's like we said back at the end of spring, the positive with like Chandler and Bubba or Cameron Petway is the versatility they give us. And that's been a big positive. Whether it's about Rock or when he was here, or carry on obviously, Tim was always up front about just the uncertainty of durability. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you have guys who just never played a lot in high school because they were in blowouts and things like that. But I mean, carry on just didn't even recall the last time he had 20 pairs in a game. Right. How do you develop that comfort, whether it's them or you mentioned uh, Petway or, or Chandler who had more carries, but they don't have blazing speed right. compared to traditional backs. How do you develop the comfort with these guys when there is just there's no way of knowing until there's a game, right? So how do you how do you develop that between now and September third? Well, hey, we're gonna we're gonna get them coached up and get them ready to let them play, and and then we'll learn what they can handle and what they can't, and it may be a committee thing. I mean, it may be a deal where we don't have maybe that guy who has 30 carries like we have in the past, or there may be a guy who emerges that can handle that. And uh, we'll take it as it comes. We do feel like those guys can do a very good job for us at running back. And uh, we've got other guys that can be explosive too. I mean, whether it's young guys and, and other ways to run the football too to try to take pressure off them. But I, I don't know that yet. We won't know until we get out there and give it to him 20, 25 times how he handles it. And I don't know if he has to carry it that many times. I know you've been paying attention to the pro football focus stuff that we can tweet out over the summer and all their analysis. Do you feel you have the best guard tandem? In the SEC, they've scored unbelievably well by their analysis. Do you think you have the best guard fan in the SEC? You know, you feel really good. Al's played a lot of ball, and um, there's a lot of experience there, and that gives you great comfort whether he's helping someone like X at center or he's got another guy on the left side like a, an, uh, an Austin Golson, a Darius James, whoever, that hadn't played that position a lot. Not that he's necessarily telling them what to do, but just having a veteran guy that does everything right and does his job helps those guys. And then a guy like Braden, who's just so physically gifted. Uh, you know, we feel very good about those guys. We need some depth behind them. But, yeah, I mean, obviously those guys have done a nice job for us, and we're expecting them to, to lead us. What an overall take of the wide receivers and then your impressions early of the young guys? Uh, from a wide receiver standpoint, uh, work in progress. Again, it's kind of like everybody else. This, the consistency of performance isn't there. Is it usually there after day four? No. Uh, we're making some plays. We're leaving <coughs> plays out there. But what I have liked is this the toughness and the mindset of those guys. Uh, they're blocking very well on the perimeter. They're being tough. They're being physical. They're being coached. Uh, they're allowing themselves to be coached hard. But we got some guys that can run. You know, they all run really well. I don't know if there's like a world-class guy, but they all run well. They're big bodies. And uh, so it's just a matter of continuing to play because we're going to need them to make plays for us. And, um, and were you asking about freshman, just yeah, receiver yeah, or yeah, overall? Yeah, just receiver. Just what uh, you know, I, I think all four of those guys are going to be players for us. Now, how quick are they? I don't know. Uh, we're trying to get all four of them ready to play and, and get them ready to go. And um, it kind of goes back to your question a minute ago about someone like John Franklin. Is that game one? Is it as the season goes? I don't know. Um, but we're planning on all four of those guys helping us, whether it's a big role or not. We really depend on the rest of fall camp and, and then once we get into games. Brett, the line that Gus has used about Jeremy all, all offseason is that he went through a storm. Is he still going through that storm, or do you feel like he's – Earn the trust of the coach, trust coach and staff again, or is that first three games still in the back of his mind, or your mind, or Gus's mind, or everybody's mind still? He's not going through a storm. He's gone through the storm. Okay. I mean, that I think everybody gets that. Um, you know, he had a lot of adversity. It was a rough year for him, as for others. Um, the very impressive thing is, a lot of times young men that age, whether they, they transfer, they quit, they leave, they whatever, and you know, he pushed through it. And uh, you got to be extremely proud of him for that. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen moving forward. We're going to play the best guy, Nothing, you know, and there's no, um, there's no kind of past baggage that will factor in, and there's no kind of, well, but, hey, because he's been through it. No, the best guy's going to play. But I am proud of how he's pushed through that and been a great teammate and been an Auburn man and been someone who said, no, I'm going to graduate from Auburn. I love Auburn, and I want to help this team win in whatever capacity that is, and I'm going to compete until you tell me I am or I'm not the guy. 
And um, so from that standpoint, yeah, he's come out of the storm. And now it's about a fresh start, a new year. And to me, nothing from last year matters anymore for him or anyone else. It's not going to help us win or lose. If we'd have gone 15-0, and 0, it wouldn't matter. And then what happened, happened. It won't matter. This is a new year and a new team, and so we'll see what happens. Why well, wasn't Stephen Davis in practice? He came late. He came late. Yeah, and everything's fine. He just had a couple things he was fixing, and he, he was there at the end. What was he add to the running back situation? Again, he's brand new. Now, he's a big guy, and he's got good DNA, you know. So, um, you know, he's a guy that – We'll just see where he's at. I know Tim told me after the first day, the first time he met with him after the first day, that you know he retains stuff pretty well. So we'll just see. Again, once we get him playing and getting tackled, we'll have a better idea. All right. Thank you. Let's go. Right. See you guys.